Welcome back to Chapel United Church of Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Glad you're here today. Any announcements? Oh, yes.
So, glad you're here this morning. Now let's prepare ourselves to rejoice and worship living God together.
Now we commend you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition they receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right. This was because this was in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now, such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Sisters and brothers, do not be weary in doing what is right. Merciful God, humbly we give you thanks for coming to life among us as Jesus of Nazareth. Through your ministry of healing and teaching, we learn so much about living as kind, caring human beings. As we witness your, as we witness the effect your love has on people's spirit and well-being, we are attracted to becoming your followers, Christ Jesus. Events unfold day by day and week by week. For those whose lives have been rocked by natural disaster, violence, or some other outside influence in recent everywhere, God. Comfort your people, dear God. Merciful God, we offer you our thanks and praise for your boundless grace. We are grateful, loving God, for the nourishment and the support and the acceptance which you reliably provide. These are three treasured blessings. 
blessings from your marvelous array of blessings that you extend to us 24-7. Thank you, God, for your gifts. Lead us to graciously receive your blessing and in turn to extend your blessing to others. Each new day, may we submit to your guidance every chance we get, offering everyone we encounter your abundant grace and love. God of all tenderness in you, we discover the meaning of our existence is to give our lives in your name, Christ Jesus. And now we join our voices together, praying the words that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
God says, For I'm about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more will there be sound of weeping heard in the city or the cry of distress. No more, no more will there be in it an infant who lives only a few days or an old person who does not live out a full lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered a curse. They will build houses and inhabit them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They will not build and another inhabit. They will not plant and another eat. For the days of a tree will be like the days of my people. And my chosen will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they will be offspring blessed by the Lord. Descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together. The lion will eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food, will be dust. They will not hurt or destroy. Did anyone here go vote on Tuesday? I hope everybody did. Well, I went to vote, and uh, over the years, the polling place closest to my home, closest to where I live, has changed. But now, where I go to vote is in middle school. So as I was waiting in line, an interesting experience in many respects, you probably got your own experiences. But we were moving into the cafeteria, which was all set up uh, and with partitions so people could cast their votes privately and all the rest. And anyway, I got to the door, the threshold more or less of the cafeteria, and I see painted up on the uh, wall in, in the cafeteria, true leaders do not create followers. It caught my attention, mostly because I'm not sure what to think of this statement. Our faith, it seems to me, encourages us to become followers. Am I wrong about that? So then, if true leaders do not create followers, what does this say about our Master, Jesus Christ? I'm not certain I don't have the answers to these things. I just tossed the questions out, right? I suppose this is why the fact that I'm not certain is why I'm inclined to dismiss what is painted on the wall at that middle school as incorrect off base. What do you think? True leaders do not create followers. Uncertainty. We touched on an aspect of uncertainty last Sunday here in worship. One week ago, we acknowledged that most people at some time or another are at least curious, if not very concerned, about what happens after our bodies die. What comes next after our earthly physical death? There is uncertainty about this because we will not know until we personally experience death. We want assurances, though, don't we? We want description of what's going to come down, or the way things are going to be. 
Generally, in our younger days, we seek such assurances on behalf of people who are older than we are. Closer to the grave, you might say. Might be kind of blunt, but... Later, once we ourselves have lived to a ripe old age, we begin seeking assurances of what's going to come next on our own behalf. Uncertainty, uncertainties tend to bother us. Especially here in the land of problem solving, where we're accustomed to having answers and knowledge about everything under the sun in advance. Here in the Western Hemisphere, where we expect to receive answers. But with regard to this loosey-goosey, fuzzy afterlife, we simply do not know, will not know, ahead of time. So, thinking more broadly about uncertainties, whether it's reading a statement painted on the wall at a school, or what do you think about the afterlife? Many times we view uncertainties as failures or inadequacies, inadequacies or threats. We like to have things figured out in advance. When we don't, then we may perceive uncertainties as dangers or threats. We fear them. What about God? Does God fear uncertainties? Hard to tell. As we love to joke about such matters, this is above my pay grade. Does God fear uncertainties? Our United States of America had a national election last Tuesday, yet as of this morning, we still do not know the outcome of some 2022 campaigns for political office. Let's be honest, this bugs us as citizens in the land where knowledge and power, the nation in which we demand accurate information, ASAP. Uncertainty. Still, we wait. Recently, while I was in a, in a care facility for the elderly, I was waiting for the elevator to, ar to arrive. I uh, pushed the button so that I could ride up and go visit someone who lives upstairs. And I was, as I was standing there with essentially nothing to do, I have to glance off to the side and I noticed a sign posted on the wall to the left side of the elevator. This may be why I noticed it. The top line of the sign reads, Pass Out Daily. <laughs> now, in a facility for residents who already are burdened with 
personal health risks and limitations. This doesn't seem like the most helpful message to post on a wall. Pass out daily. Well, I was still waiting for that elevator call light to go out and the elevator doors to open. The elevator still had not arrived, so I took a second look at that sign. Pass, here's the full message. Pass out daily. Calendar and activity schedule. That's, that's how the sign was. But I don't know, maybe even in the Word of God sometimes, we need to be careful about how we phrase things, don't we? Instead of just leading off with the first three words, and maybe somebody, what, me, doesn't get any farther than that, doesn't take another look. There are there definitely are moments when the world today is a place of turmoil. A world clearly in need of life-giving acts of faith. Well, I haven't really said much about the beautiful poetry of the prophet Isaiah this morning. And uh, I need to comment on it. The book of Isaiah as you may know, has 66 chapters. So we're pretty near at the end here in chapter 65. And the passage that is the appointed lectionary reading for this day that I read, Isaiah 65, 17 to 25, is some of the more magnificent language in the book of the prophet Isaiah. In fact, this stuff about the wolf and the lamb, the, the wolf and the lamb feeding together, the lion eating straw like an ox. Even the closing line, they will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, is other places in Isaiah. I mean, some of it way back in earlier chapters of Isaiah. But here we are in chapter 65. And it's about a new heavens and a new earth. It's a vision of the way the world, the universe, through all creation, not just a nation, but all humankind and all creation, every living thing, the way there can be harmony. And one of the phrases I think that is powerful here for all of us is, remember God is offering us this message through Isaiah, but God says, before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. This is how thoroughly God knows us. And if this is God's dream, God's vision, God knows our dreams. God is a mind reader because God has created you and me and every living thing. And so God knows before the words of finished coming out of our mouths. God knows what it is that we're going to express to God. Perhaps in a prayer, uh, a petition, maybe. A lot of times our prayers are petitions. We, we go to God and we ask and ask and ask for things. But I think our Savior Jesus Christ displays for us that prayer is a combination of things and that as important as prayer can be for us an opportunity to express ourselves to God, prayer is an opportunity for us to be all ears and to listen to what God is saying. And understanding or appreciating might be a better word for this verse Isaiah 65 verse 24 can be something that offers us hope and encouragement every hour of every day. God promising us, assuring us, before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. So, with this uplifting message from the prophet Isaiah, here we are. 
feet of clay in a world that is a place of turmoil, clearly in need of life-giving acts of faith. God is willing and God longs to use each of us to offer healing, steadfast love to an at-risk world that is hurting. You and I and all people are living in a world that sorely needs to be redeemed, don't we know? But yes, this world needs to be redeemed, but before we throw our hands up in the air despairing, the world's a lost cause. Let's remember Jesus. This is what our Savior calls on us to do, isn't it? Jesus says, remember me. Jesus repeats, remember me. So don't pass out and don't pass up opportunities to remember Jesus. And we remember him best, don't we, friends? By following Jesus. By behaving as he behaves. By loving as he loves by living as Jesus lives. Our lives make a statement. What will it be? As you and I consider how we may attempt to do our part as ambassadors of God's blessings, an important starting place is declaring our faith. And so, I invite all of us together to move to our next portion of worship. And I invite all who are able to stand and join together in our United Church of Christ statement of faith. This is found on page four in the Q booklet. Let us proclaim what we believe. We believe in you. Eternal Spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds be testified. You call the world into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from meaninglessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declare to prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating a new in the church of Jesus Christ, binding a covenant, faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto you. Amen.
choice to be a follower. For living God, your God, promises, before you call, I will answer. While you are still speaking, I will hear. God is still speaking. God is still listening. God loves you. 